What if I told you scientists have just found the perfect place for humans to live on Mars, and it's somewhere no one expected? Imagine standing on a silent red plane under a sky-tinted orange. The air is so thin it would kill you in seconds, yet just a few feet below your boots lies frozen water enough to keep an entire colony alive for decades, enough to make rocket fuel that could carry us back home. This isn't a movie scene, this place is real. And until recently, it wasn't even on NASA's radar. For decades, Mars was the ultimate dream and the ultimate impossibility. Too far, too dangerous, too unforgiving. But this new discovery changes everything. It's not just about where we'll land, it's about how we'll survive once we get there. And that's only the beginning. SpaceX has quietly updated its mission plans. NASA is testing habitat designs you won't believe. And Europe has unveiled a 2040 vision that sounds more like science fiction than reality. Today, you're going to hear it all. The breakthroughs, the challenges, and the secrets shaping humanity's first steps on another planet. Why Mars? It's not the easiest place to get to. It's not the safest, and it's definitely not the cheapest. But for scientists and dreamers alike, Mars is the ultimate prize. Out of all the worlds in our solar system, Mars is the one that feels most like home. It has mountains taller than Everest, canyons deeper than the Grand Canyon, and days that are almost the same length as Earth's, just 40 minutes longer. It even has seasons. Winters where ice creeps across the poles, and summers when temperatures near the equator can reach a surprisingly mild 20 degrees Celsius. Beneath its dusty red soil lies something even more valuable, water ice. Not just a little, but enough to sustain human life, grow food, and make rocket fuel. That single resource turns Mars from a dead rock into a place we could actually live. And then there's the mystery. Billions of years ago, Mars may have had rivers, lakes, even oceans. It might have been a blue and green world alive with activity. If life ever existed there, its fingerprints could still be hidden in the rocks beneath our feet. That's why Mars isn't just our future. It might be our greatest archeological dig in history. For decades, scientists have debated where humans should land on Mars. Some argued for sites near the equator for warmth, others pushed for higher latitudes where water ice is easier to reach, but no one expected the top choice to be here, Amazonas Planitia. Stretching for hundreds of miles, Amazonas Planitia is one of the flattest places in the entire solar system. That might sound boring, but for landing a massive rocket like SpaceX's Starship, it's a dream. Fewer rocks, Fewer craters and fewer obstacles mean a much safer touchdown. But flat ground isn't enough to build a colony. What makes this site truly special lies just beneath the surface, shallow deposits of frozen water, not buried under kilometers of rock, close enough that astronauts could dig it up with basic equipment. And water isn't just for drinking. Split it into hydrogen and oxygen and you have rocket fuel. That means a Mars colony at Amazonas Planitia could refuel spacecraft for return trips to Earth or for journeys deeper into the solar system. The region also sits near the equator, which offers two big advantages, warmer average temperatures and easier access to sunlight for solar power. Until recently, Amazonas Planitia wasn't even on NASA's short list of landing sites, but new orbital radar scans revealed its hidden ice and confirmed its stable weather patterns. Suddenly, it went from an afterthought to the front runner. And here's where it gets interesting. If humans do land here, Amazonas Planitia could become more than a base. It could be the launch pad for the rest of our solar system. But before we can build there, someone has to get us to Mars. And one company has been making promises, some bold, some controversial, about doing just that. For years, SpaceX's founder Elon Musk has been making headlines with one audacious goal, putting humans on Mars. His vision is clear, thousands of starships ferrying people and cargo until Mars becomes a fully self-sustaining city. But if you've been following closely, you might have noticed something in the fine print. The dates keep shifting. Just a few years ago, Musk hinted that the first crewed mission could happen as early as the mid-2020s. Today, the target is more cautious an uncrewed mission within the next three to four years, and the first humans sometime between 2028 and 2030. Why the change? Part of it comes down to Starship itself. While the giant rocket has made progress, perfecting it for the most dangerous landing in human history is a different challenge altogether. Mars has just enough atmosphere to make landing tricky, but not enough to slow a spacecraft the way Earth's atmosphere does. That means SpaceX needs a landing system unlike anything we've used before. Then there's the issue of cargo. Musk's plan involves sending multiple supply ships ahead of the crew, loaded with habitats, power systems, and life support equipment. Every single one has to arrive safely, because on Mars, there's no second shipment coming in a few days. And in a surprising twist, Musk revealed that the first crew to set foot on Mars might not be human at all. He's considering sending Optimus, SpaceX's humanoid robot, to perform on the ground test before risking human lives. If successful, 
Optimus could set up basic infrastructure, test water extraction, and prepare the landing site for human arrival. While delays frustrate some fans, others see it as a sign that SpaceX is getting serious. Mars isn't a place where you can afford mistakes. Every decision, every bolt, every line of code has to be perfect. But SpaceX isn't going it alone. Other nations are joining the race and one recent partnership could decide who truly plants the first flag on the red planet. For all of Elon Musk's ambition, even SpaceX knows it can't conquer Mars alone. Getting there is one thing, staying there is another. That's why, behind the scenes, partnerships are forming that could shape the future of the Red Planet. One of the most interesting alliances is with the Italian Space Agency. On paper, it might seem like a small player compared to NASA or ESA, but Italy is bringing something essential. Experiments designed to answer the most basic, yet critical question. Can we actually live on Mars? Their upcoming payloads will test how plants grow in Martian conditions, how well compact weather stations can predict dangerous storms, and how to measure radiation levels in real time. If any of these fail, a colony could be in serious trouble. If they succeed, they could become the blueprint for survival. And Italy isn't alone. Several other countries are quietly negotiating for slots on early Starship missions. The reason is simple. Mars colonization won't just be a scientific race. It will be a geopolitical one. The first nations to establish a presence will have influence over everything from mining rights to where future settlements are built. International collaboration also reduces the risk. Multiple countries sharing resources means fewer single points of failure. If one experiment fails, another might pick up the slack. And if one nation can't deliver a crucial component on time, another can step in. But cooperation only goes so far. At some point, Mars settlers will need more than data and gadgets. They'll need shelter. And the designs on the table right now look less like houses and more like something out of a science fiction novel. When you picture a Mars colony, you might imagine shiny metal domes or glass bubbles glistening under the orange sky. The truth, the design scientists are working on look nothing like that. And for good reason, on Mars, beauty comes second to survival. One of the most promising concepts is 3D printed habitats made directly from Martian regolith, the dusty iron rich soil covering the planet. Using massive robotic printers, astronauts could turn the very ground they walk on into sturdy walls. This means no need to haul heavy building materials from Earth, saving billions in launch costs. Another bold idea comes from NASA's experiments with fungus-based biostructures. These mushroom-like buildings wouldn't just be grown, they could potentially self-repair. Imagine a living habitat that seals its own cracks after a dust storm or grows extra insulation during the freezing Martian nights. Then there are inflatable modules, lightweight structures launched from Earth, expanded on Mars, and covered in a thick layer of local soil for radiation protection. They might not sound glamorous, but they can be deployed quickly, which is crucial in the early days of settlement. Some designs even combine these ideas. A printed outer shell from Martian dust, an inner living layer made of biomaterials, and inflatable supports for quick assembly. The goal isn't just to keep settlers alive, it's to make them comfortable enough to stay. Comfort might sound like a luxury, but on Mars, morale is as important as oxygen. Long-term isolation, harsh weather, and the constant awareness that a single failure could be fatal. It's a psychological pressure cooker. And while NASA and SpaceX focus on the first wave of habitats, Europe is already thinking decades ahead. Their 2040 Space Oasis vision doesn't just imagine survival, it imagines thriving. While NASA and SpaceX are locked in a race to get the first boots on Mars, the European Space Agency is quietly painting a much bigger picture. Their 2040 Space Oasis concept doesn't stop at landing. It imagines a thriving, self-sufficient settlement that could support hundreds, maybe thousands, of people. The vision starts with modular habitats linked together like a small city. Some modules would handle life support, oxygen production, water recycling, and food cultivation, while others would serve as living quarters, research labs, and even recreation spaces. Energy would come from massive solar farms positioned across the Martian surface, feeding power into a central grid. ESA's engineers are even considering nuclear microreactors for constant power during the long, dark Martian winters. One of the boldest parts of the plan is the use of closed loop systems. Nothing is wasted. Every drop of water, every molecule of air, and even organic waste would be recycled. On Earth, this level of efficiency is a luxury. On Mars, it's survival. ESA's Space Oasis also envisions direct trade routes between Mars, the Moon, and Earth. These wouldn't just move supplies, they'd allow Mars to export resources mined from its surface, possibly including metals rare on Earth. And here's where things get truly futuristic. Part of the design includes artificial gravity habitats in orbit around Mars. These massive rotating stations would serve as waypoints for interplanetary travel, medical recovery, and manufacturing. But as inspiring as it sounds, ESA's plan also reveals a sobering truth. Technology isn't the only challenge. Human survival on Mars will come down to battling forces that no spacecraft or habitat can completely shield us from. Mars looks inviting in concept art, but the reality is brutal. 
Even with the best rockets, the smartest engineers, and the boldest visionaries, there are forces on this planet that could end the dream of colonization before it truly begins. The first is radiation. Without a global magnetic field like Earth's, Mars is constantly bombarded by cosmic rays and solar particles. A year on its surface could expose settlers to doses that dramatically increase cancer risks. Thick walls, underground shelters, or radiation absorbing materials will be essential but none are perfect solutions. Then there are dust storms. Some are small, swirling whirlwinds. Others can blanket the entire planet for weeks, blocking sunlight, cutting solar power, and reducing visibility to almost zero. These storms can damage equipment, cover solar panels, and make outside work impossible. The psychological toll is another hidden danger. Imagine being months from home in a small community with no escape from your surroundings. Isolation, limited privacy, and constant dependence on technology for survival can push even the most trained astronauts to their limits. Supply chain fragility is a less glamorous but equally deadly challenge. Every piece of food, medicine, and spare parts that can't be made on Mars has to be shipped from Earth, and any launch delay could mean shortages that risk lives. And then there's the wild card, unknown factors. Mars has a way of surprising us. Unmapped hazards, unexpected weather patterns, or unforeseen technical failures could appear without warning. Overcoming these challenges will require more than just technology. It will take planning, adaptability, and a willingness to learn from mistakes. But if we can face them head on, the reward could be nothing less than a new chapter in human history. Which brings us to the final question. After all the planning, the delays, and the risks, who will actually set foot on Mars first? For the first time in human history, the dream of living on another world isn't just a fantasy, it's a plan. We know where to land. We know how to build. We even have a roadmap for turning Mars from a barren desert into a place we can call home. Amazonis Planitia could be the stage where the first chapter of humanity's interplanetary story is written. SpaceX is preparing the ships, NASA and ESA are shaping the technology, and nations around the globe are joining forces to make it real. But the race isn't over. Timelines can slip, politics can change, unseen challenges can appear overnight. The truth is, we don't know who will set foot there first or whether they'll be a government astronaut, a private explorer, or even a humanoid robot paving the way. What we do know is this. Whoever takes that first step will carry more than a flag. They'll carry the hopes of every generation that dared to look at the night sky and imagine more. Mars is no longer just a point of light in the distance. It's a destination. And maybe, just maybe, it's our next home. If you enjoyed this video and want more space exploration updates, subscribe, hit the like button, and drop a comment with your thoughts on Mars colonization. Who do you think will get there first?